Hello YouTubers, I'm back again. My name is Maya. Hello for all of those friends that have been here before. Thank you for coming again to my little corner in the internet. And welcome to all of your new subscribers. Thank you very much if you have subscribed. I'll get on with the knitting. That's what you're here for, most of you anyway. And or to see things that have been happening in my life. Well, today it's going to be what's on and what's off the needles or hooks. And before I say anything, I've just got to pause one second. I've forgotten. And I'm here I'm back again. I'm sorry for that. I didn't think of bringing the largest item. And what is the title today? What? You cut your tartan crochet blanket in half? Yes, I did. That wasn't planned, I must admit. Otherwise, I would have made it smaller from the beginning. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Well, simple fact, I couldn't get it into the washing machine. <laughs> I stuffed and stuffed and it just wouldn't go. So, <laughs> I had to cut it in half and do a crochet stick. Now, that's something new. I looked on YouTube and everywhere. I had not seen anyone do a crochet stick before. So I just had to go. Basically, I measured half of the blanket and on either side I pinched it in, crocheted together. And I'll show you in a minute, but beware, there's lots of still sewn in but loose ends because I didn't want any fraying I wasn't sure whether it was going to work and I haven't cut any of the ends off and I always cut the ends off after I've washed the item at least once so that is the reason anyway so I crocheted in um in single crochet that in UK is double crochet all the way along the end until I had both sides secure and then I took the scissors and cut right up the middle. That was the only way I was going to get this item into the washing machine. So I'll show you. Right. Okay. This is my half of a tartan blanket. As you see, it's been washed now, but I, the woven ends haven't been cut off yet either. So this is the part Oh, oh, part of the part that I did. So I'll show you the nice side first. So here you see single crochet all along the edge. And when I turn over, you will see what I mean. I pinch together and then I just cut. You see, so it's basically what I did here is I made sure that each side was caught, each stitch. And I'll show you on the other side again. See, I went one stitch below like that. So that's how I did it. And it worked. And actually, it has hardly frazzled since at all. And it doesn't look like it's going to be coming undone anytime soon. But I will leave it like this for a little while and wash it again just to make sure. But I don't think it's going to come undone. Well, that was a new experience. A super new experience. You see here? That's the crochet stick. This was the stick below where I cut in the middle. So, that is so much to the humongous tartan blanket. Well, as it's in half, it still fits perfectly on the sofa. And it still fits on the bed. I just have to put it the other way around. So, <laughs> so guys, if you do my tartan blanket with the same yarn below, choose a smaller size. <laughs> it doesn't fit in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know is that a fail I, do you count that as a fail I have no idea well let's say we've got to be resourceful so 
the next one was I knit a a jumper earlier this year with a square square to a square neckline and three quarter sleeves. Well, it's got a lot colder now, and it's just simply too cold. So I had to change that as well. Here it is. So this is how how I well. I've now added a neck so that it fits. It's not down up because it was from here to here and here. So that's how that's the square that it was. Now it's got a round neckline. What I did there, so I took up all the stitches and I basically ribbed once again sewn in, but not yet. Um, cut off because I wanted to go through the washing machine first and the three-quarter sleeves were bugging me in the end as well so again took up stitches as you see I had a different finish because I actually knitted it this way up with sleeves and all didn't think about that did I anyway you learn and so I took up the stitches here again as well I'm showing you the bottom of the sleeve, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, and then I just added a whole new piece of rib. So thank goodness. That's why I write these things down on my Ravelry notes. I knew what needle I had used, so I took a number four. I used a four, five millimeter to knit this. So I took a four millimeter to do the adjustments. So that's off the needles and so is this there we go full jumper full jumper on this side that's the from tin can knits and that's the other side you can wear it whichever way you like this as front or the other side as front and I just want to show you something else with this, <clears throat> which is, well, a revelation really, because I did do stitch count and I accounted for that because I'm that sort of person. I only treat British wools and wool wools with the utmost care. Those are the only ones that I hand wash. Everything else, be it a sock or a jumper or a hat whatever it is it gets and goes into the washing machine so I what I did do is I did do a swatch I did count the stitch count before and after the washing machine and after as in after washing machine and low heat dryer I counted the stitch count so that I was sure that the end product would be when it's knitted up I needed this stitch count and it needed to be that much longer in case it shrinks or grows whichever way around it happens with that yarn I'm using in the washing machine and dryer because it does happen as well some acrylic product that I've used before has grown and grown and grown um, so that's why I do that now stitch count before just knit it up in stockinette and then I throw that swatch into the washing machine and dryer as I usually would. And then I count it again. And I write down both on the label. Right now, but I wanted to show you something else. Right, this part here on the sleeve, this is done with a circular needle. This is a four millim. Sorry, no, it was three millimeters, three millimeter needle, circular needle. Now, the sleeve, and you see this best on here, the sleeve is on double pointed needles, also three millimeters. But can you see the difference here? I'll come up close so maybe you can see it better. Can you see the gauge change? 
that's unreal look and it's not only on this sleeve I don't know why I have a stripe going up that other one um, same happened here so that just shows sometimes you have to make a stitch gauge with all the needles you're using as well. I knit so much tighter on double points than on circulars. So that's just another lesson for the next one. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this on an earlier video. What I tend to do is I use lesser yarns when I'm trying out something new and when I'm using new tools and and when I want something, you know, like just for popping on, for walking the dogs and so on, for, for day use, um, I use cheaper yarns. Um, this is actually a, an acrylic and wool blend with some nylon. And I think it's, the wool is, was the... Hang on, I have to think now. I can't really remember. Wool and acrylic. Acrylic was sort of like 50-50. And the nylon was, I think, 10%. So that's this pen. And it is super warm. It is not very soft, which is strange. However, it doesn't matter, as I've always got T-shirts on underneath anyway. Um, and it doesn't bother me around the neckline. However, same applies to the neckline um, on the pattern. I just want to mention that next time I, I followed the pattern exactly. But this neckline for me is a tiny bit too narrow. Now, there's two ways of going about this. Either I cast on more stitches for the neckline next time, or I just use the same 3 millimeter needles as I use on the body. And I think I'll, that's the way I will go. I'll try that with the next one. Um, instead of using 2 millimeters, I'll use three the 3 millimeters, but the same stitch count. I think that's what I'll do with that. So that's off the needles as well. Yay! Glad for that. That's another one off the needles. What else did I do? Oh, yes. A few small items. I made out of that hand spun, I made a what I will now call the grapefruit hat because it looks like grapefruit segments or like orange segments up the top. I quite like that. You see, when it's stretched out, when it's lying like that, it's not particularly apparent. But so I'll call this the pomelo hat. So this is my grapefruit pomelo hat. So I made that. Um, hand dyed. This was bear sock from Knit Picks. And I dyed it with Wiltshire food colorings. So that was my first my first trial i have left this lying in the sun to see whether it bleaches a lot whether it will get lighter and it has not so perfectly fine perfectly fine um i'm most probably going to do some wrist warmers with this because i've still got loads left as well so i have a matching set and if i can get a cowl out of the 100 grams and i'll make a cowl as well but i'm not sure after i've done hat and wrist warmers so we'll see so that's off the needles then I did two washcloths these are in glove format this one was a 35 stitch 35 stitches and sewn together I could have done it on a magic loop or like a sock on circulars but I chose to do it this way a second one this one was a 45 and this has just been washed um, it's just literally come out of washer and dryer 
I washed this on 40 degrees and you can see the difference in how this shrinks a little bit as it is cotton. This is 100% cotton. And then I had still some left and I made just a simple, simple one for the kitchen like that, just a plain. Whatever was left, I used up to the last bit of yarn. So these three are made from a 50 gram, 50 gram? I'm not sure. Hang on, let me just check. Yes, I checked. It is. It's 50 grams of cotton. So this was exactly 50 grams. These three items, 50 grams <coughs> of yarn so that's also off the needles and then hooray I'm finally getting somewhere with my fair isle jumper I had lost the pattern I had to recount everything I'd lost the physical pattern so that's where I'm up to now Done the sticks, all the sticks, done the stick here, put in the, the collar, and I'm now on my sleeve. Right, this is also a work in progress. Why? Because I will show you something. I used, well, this is Jameson's, Jameson's Shetland Spindrift. Oops, does that focus? Yeah, now, Jameson's Spindrift, all of it. And on the shoulder, I just did the one color because I didn't want to put a pattern in right at the top. And you can see how thin that is. Right, now, I didn't want the arm to be that thin. I've had so many problems on, because I stopped here, wasn't it? That was the last line you saw on the former video so I did this all this pattern again recounted that and then I thought no I don't want to put another line of <clears throat> this in because it'll it'll vanish anyway and it kept breaking and breaking and breaking I've had so many problems in this little bit here it took me like forever because it the, the yarn just kept breaking. Um, so I thought, no, I definitely can't do that. I'm hoping this is going to, when blocked, washed by hand and blocked, that this will knit together a bit and be more durable because I actually fear for it. This is a three needle bind off. I didn't dare do Kitchener stitch because some of the threads were so thin. I thought, no, this needs to be knitted that I now gone to the sleeve and I'm taking double and as I haven't got enough yarn of the same colour I have to take all the background colours together to make a double yarn because arms are going to be used a lot so I'm on my arm basically that's as far as I've got but I'm super happy now I'm working out the decreases um, and it fits actually quite well. Obviously, I'm going to most probably stretch it a bit lengthwise. <clears throat> it's long enough right now, but maybe just a tad. Right, so that's the famous Fair Isle Jumper. I'm glad I've got on that far. So that's all that's happened since my last video. It does, sorry, <laughs> it doesn't seem like a lot, but I've been at it as much as I could, as in in the evenings. On Saturday, only on Saturday did I have sort of not a whole day off, but I, I didn't do much knitting on the Saturday. Um, 
So I've been been knitting and knitting and knitting, basically, and it feels like there's little to show for. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. That's what it is. So project. Projects are now going to be a finish the fair aisle. That's now my my main focus is finishing that fair aisle so that I can wash it and block it. And then I've still got the pair of socks to finish, the, the knee-high socks. I've got those to finish. And then I'm planning on doing... A jumper another jumper or two actually I've got two in mind I won't tell you about one of those but the other one will be similar to the red green and blue one that I showed before um, or I'll just just go plain raglan style on that with nothing much just a functional one because the yarn will be more or less the same sort of yarn different colors same sort of yarn just to get it done quickly. So that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I've been up to. There's nothing been much happening. Otherwise, in the knitting corner or in the crochet corner, and I'm sort of happy that there isn't, because I did put a lot of pressure on myself with getting these things finished, um, yeah, and being. Getting there and getting there. So that is all I have to say for today. I made it short, maybe not quite so sweet, but at least you can laugh. You see, it even happens to people that have crocheted a long while. <laughs> I didn't plan for that to happen with the with, with the tartan blanket, but there you go. So that's a warning. I didn't think of. Uh, <laughs> of the neckline when I was knitting that uh, the green blue and red jump up either so that's what happens you see <laughs> so you just have to come up with solutions so that also took some time away because I wanted to get those done as the weather's got so cold I really want to wear things like that now <clears throat> I do wear fleece like this one I'm wearing today but it gets a bit too hot for me I prefer to have jumpers rather than zip up because then they always bulk up under the coat underneath because I wear a coat out as well so that's it for today and I'll think about what maybe I'm going to be posting next time if I haven't got a lot of knitting stuff ready I will I'll do next video when I've got the fair owl finished <laughs> now let's hope that'll be in a week's or two weeks time and not in a year's time. <laughs> so I wish you a wonderful day. Have lots of fun. Don't get discouraged. And don't put yourself under pressure as I tend to do. Just, just go in your pace and enjoy. See you another day. Bye-bye.